Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. Today we are going to learn how to read the file names from zip files and load them to the SQL Server table. So let's let's go to the folder and take a look. Right here I have four zip files and uh, these zip files contain one or more than one files inside. So let me open customer zip file. If I open that one we can see that there are three text files and one excel file in this uh, zip file. So what we want to do we want to get these file names and then log or put into the SQL Server table. By doing it, we would know that how many files are uh, in each of the uh, zip file and actually we will have more information. We can query that and we can find and we can search different uh, files according to the requirement. So let me go back here in SSMS and show you the DDL statement. So here I have create table dbo zip files info. So that's the name of the table and I have created an identity column here and then I want to have a zip file name so this will be the actual zip file name and then uh, this uh, the file name will be the name that zip file contain so in this case uh, we have four files so one entry will be this uh, customer zip file name and then there would be four entries uh, because uh, this uh, th this zip file contain four records uh, or four files now we can go ahead and create this uh, table table is created next part uh, what we need to do we need to go ahead and create SSIS package before I create SSIS package let me tell you what we are going to learn here we are going to learn uh, how to create a package parameter in SSIS package we are going to use uh, the dotnet framework 4.5 in script task uh, and we will be adding couple of assemblies uh, as well and then uh, we are going to create the adio.net connection manager in SSIS package and we will use that adio.net connection manager in uh, script task as well and uh, finally we will be using these uh, different um, classes uh, from the uh, system.io.compression.file system assembly to use uh, some methods uh, and uh, read the file names from the zip files uh, and insert into the SQL Server table by using script task. So let's go to the SSDT or bids whatever you have according to the version of SSIS uh, you are using. So let's uh, click here on SSIS packages new SSIS package. First of all let's go and create a parameter. In your case if you are using old version you don't have to create a, a parameter you can go ahead and create a variable I always do that create a variable or parameter so I can change in by, uh, the value of these uh, parameter or variable by using the configuration because on each of the environment you can have different path so let me archive folder so in my case I'm creating this uh, parameter called archive folder and I'm going to save the path here so let's go and save the path here in the value. Next part, what we are going to do, we are going to create a adio.net connection manager that will be that we will be using in this script task. So right click here in the connection managers pan and then go to the new adio.net connection or you can go to new connection and select from there your choice. Here we will be creating a new one. So we have to provide SQL Server instance name or server name. So let's uh, select that then we select the database. As you guys can see that I have created a table in the test database so I'm going to use that one. So let's select the test sorry. You can write it or you can get from the drop down your choice. And you can test the connection fine hit OK so it is created and uh, let's go back and rename this one so we can rename db underscore connection now we are all good let's bring the script task as we will be using script task in this there are multiple ways to handle this one we could have used a for each loop container and loop through each file and just use the script task to get the file names and put into that but in this video I'm going to use the script task and I will be looping through the files by in this script task as well so let's open the script task select the parameter 
in our case we have package parameter called archive folder in your case it can be variable if you are using old versions or still you are going with the package deployment so you will be using the variable then uh, next part if you want to select vb.net you can select it in my case i'm going to use c sharp we are all good here and i have created the, the script already i'm going to add that script uh, once we are ready first of all we have to change the framework so we will be using dotnet framework 4.5 so go to solution added and here we will be changing target framework dotnet framework 4 to 4.5 now it will ask shut down and close it or refresh it okay fine next uh, we will be adding couple of assemblies so click on add references add reference and here select the assemblies so we are targeting dotnet framework 4.5 now let's select uh, system.io.compression sorry here and the system.compression.file system hit ok now close this window and I have written the script already I'm going to copy and paste and show you or walk you through step by step so we can learn what exactly I'm trying to do here so we can paste the script here in the main now we can close this window and as you can see that uh, there are some uh, uh, underlined red uh, lines here because uh, there are some assemblies references which are missing so we need to add uh, those uh, namespaces uh, let's go back here and in the namespaces we will be using uh, we'll say using system dot data dot sql client so we'll be using that one let's see if that that part is taken care now that connection a uh, sql connection is no more uh, uh, underlined with the red line so we are good and next part if you see here there are certain um, objects or whatever uh, instances or methods we are using here they are underlined with the, the red because the assembly is not uh, we have added the assembly but we have to add the namespace here as well so we will be using here so using system dot io dot sorry io dot compression so now we are all good so these uh, two namespaces we need to add in this uh, uh, scenario so we can use uh, different methods uh, of those classes uh, here so first of all and uh, one more thing uh, still it is in directory because we are writing to we are reading from the files and uh, one more namespace we have to add uh, that system dot io as we are dealing with the, the files and folders so we are good now here let me walk you through so I'm declaring a local variable here so I'm calling it arc folder why I'm using this local variable because I don't want to copy and paste this code over and over so once I have this one I can use uh, this uh, variable anywhere so I don't have to write the entire thing again and again or copy paste so here we are saying DTS dot variables dollar sign package archive folder so you will be using uh, the package parameter here and it start with dollar sign and then if it is package parameter you will say package if it is a, a project parameter you will say project if uh, you are using variable you have just have to say user so you have to remove this part and say user that's all you have to uh, do we are gonna use the package parameter here though next uh, we are opening a, a class we have class here system dot data dot sql client dot sql connection so we are declaring the object of that and new same thing here we have this uh, local uh, variable here and then uh, here we are using that connection uh, that we have uh, created if you guys remember that i did uh, db underscore connection so in case uh, if i will be just uh, leaving this one as it is we will get error let's get the error and see then we can fix that let me close this part now we are saying a sql command so we are preparing our sql command um, that's our sql query we are going to prepare and we are telling this uh, okay sql command dot connection so use this connection so that's how we are kind of relating the things first of all connection and then we are preparing the sql command and telling it okay you need to use this connection next part what we are doing here we are declaring a string array so what it is going to do it is going to a directory and in our case we have archive folder 
and here and then reading all the file names so that's get files so that's the method we are using here that is asking okay provide me the folder from which you want to read and then uh, here if you see asterisk dot zip so I'm interested to read only the files which has extension dot zip any any file that can be any name but I'm interested to read only dot zip file here so you if you put asterisk dot asterisk it will read every file that can be simple text or um, Excel or any file but we are interested to read only zip files now once we have that array we have to loop through that array and then read one uh, zip file at a time and then from inside that zip file we will be reading those files and putting them in the SQL server table so here I'm using for each loop if you see here we have defined string and send zip file in the files array so it is going to read one file name at a time and then inside the for each loop we are saying that we are using this class uh, system.io.compression.zip archive that uh, remember we have added that assembly so that's uh, that's why we added that assembly so we can use this class uh, and here we will be open uh, that zip file so now we read the zip file from the array so here is the array that has all the zip file names we read one of them we came here then we open that uh, file just to read once uh, we are here now a zip file can have multiple files inside as well so as, as we know that in the customer case we have seen that it can have multiple files as well so we need to loop through again so let me go back here and here we are saying for each zip archive entry so we are reading the entries by using this class so we'll say a file entry in archive dot entries so here remember that's the file we opened so zip dot entries we are reading all the entries uh, from the that zip file now once we read it we are going to loop through and uh, keep uh, writing in the table so we are saying sql command dot command text so here we are preparing our sql query so we are saying insert into the our table values and values that we have zip file that's actual zip file as you see that this file name we want to put uh, in the table then uh, next uh, we want to put the entry so whatever the inside the file uh, that we want to get uh, it is going to get one file at a time and loop through it will be keep looping uh, till the, we have some file which are not inserted in the table so it will loop through now here we are getting file entry dot full name so we are trying we, we are getting the full name of that uh, file we, uh, inside the zip files and then uh, last thing we are saying sql command dot execute no query so we are running this query we don't have parameters or anything we're just running this query this will insert the record so if you want to see here let me take this part out so you can see the in the message box how our sql will be prepared and then it will run one thing remember i told you even uh, let me take this one so we can change outside we don't have to come back here we copy this one and this might fail and it is okay let's let's fail let, let it fail so we see how the package fail if we make um, errors so if outside we see that it is db underscore connection so if i run this package it should fail because inside the script as we have db connection so here we see that the error happen now from here it's kind of really difficult to get the idea it should be saying okay your connection string failed or something but uh, it doesn't give you that much information so pretty much you have to struggle by yourself uh, uh, when these kind of errors happen you know and go go take a look most of the time is uh, um, the pack, uh, variable name or the parameter name and or they are because they're case sensitive or you missed uh, um, you know some um, maybe a spelling mistake or all that so you take care of that it will be all just fine so cancel this out now let's go back here we don't need to go back to the package uh, script task editor we can just simply change here okay we are done let's run the package and now you see that insert into db.zip uh, file info that's our table name values see okay this is the path of the zip file complete path and then this is the file name come in so it took the excel file first so if i go back here right now we don't have any data in this uh, table 
So let's run this one. If you say okay, it's uh, going and getting the next file. So it's looping through. So now it is done with that as the file. Now it is going to finance. And if you want to take a look here, you can see that how it is inserting it. So right here, if we see this uh, customer zip file, this is inserted four times because it has four files inside the zip uh, for the finance. Uh, it is only one time because we have one uh, file inside that uh, zip file. So message box is okay, but if you have hundreds of uh, files, you don't want to you know click on the message box every time. So now we go here. Looks good. These are three files. Each of them has. Uh, um, they were in the zip file but they were only one file but the customer file zip file had four files inside so the package completed successfully the script uh, what are used here is also available on the blog spot and uh, you can uh, go ahead and check in the description and uh, open it and copy and paste it this this can be a good learning process uh, where you want to read those files, make decision let's say you got these files you you got this zip files and before even you want to load them you want to verify if uh, this zip file has uh, all the required file maybe you are expecting only sales data in that uh, zip file but uh, your zip file contains uh, customer files or some other files somebody zipped them and sent to you if you will try to unzip it without verification your package might fail because it will have totally different uh, or structure uh, customer file will be different from the sales and all those kind of things so one thing you can do here you can read the file names and make sure okay they match with your standard and if it does then next step will be okay you will be using data flow task here to load those files so thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video